Definitely Catastro and Musho, the deadly duo, but they are going to go up against I Tank You Heal, which uh, actually, uh, it, it, this guy has a Thunder Fury. He's not wearing it right now, I hope, but I do remember uh, playing against him and uh, kind of being surprised seeing that Thunder Fury uh, legendary proc happen. So hopefully he flexes it at some point, maybe when he equips his shield. Would be cool to see at some point, but um, <laughs> they are a pretty scary team as well. They got the ZKI mage here as well on this roster, who did a pretty good job there in the dueling tournament a couple of days ago. Uh, some of these uh, players uh, are, you know, a very heavy BG squad, heavy rankers, a lot of rank 14s here uh, on both sides. So it's going to be an exciting game here, and uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what these players can do in this matchup. Very high stakes game right now, Ben. Uh, definitely still in that upper bracket. So even losing this, uh, these teams will have an opportunity in the lower bracket. But uh, yeah, just keep in mind, thoughts on the line. Both these teams playing horde races, uh, but we do have the Noggin Fogger Dodgers. They will be playing on the Alliance side of the map. And then, of course, for Anti Gnome, they will be playing on the horde side of the map. And, uh, you know, I'm curious to see how these players break it down. I think Anti Gnome so far has had kind of the most unorthodox composition that we've really seen, uh, bringing in that triple mage, um, playing Horde side without even utilizing a shaman. Yeah, definitely. And uh, well, I mean, hopefully the team of Anti Gnome at least has uh, plenty of water and food in their bags to keep them supplied for the rest of the tournament. And uh, I actually need to craft some water soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need some too. Actually, let me have a sip right now. Mm. Yeah. There we go. Refreshments. Courtesy. Which, 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 made, which, which made made that for us? Z, ZQI? Yeah, Z, ZQI. Is he the you. water boy? We appreciate yep. that. Keeping us yep. hydrated here as we get into game here, Van. We're going to see ZK actually trying to go for a cheeky play. They're trying to steal that Berserking from the other side, but unable to do so. But yep. I like it. Uh, you know, getting getting a little bit fancy here right off the get-go. <laughs> you know, a little bit fancy, a little bit unorthodox plays. See, Voxy is going to be defending the uh, Horde side base at Rogue. Uh, you can see FN as well defending, and that is basically it looks to be the main job of the Rogue, at least in the early stages of the match. Kind of just sitting back, trying to harass the flag carrier as much as you can, and if you can win that 1v1 and keep him locked down in your base, that's best the best scenario, but even if you can't, just slowing him down for a long time buys your Restoration Druid more time to cross the map and uh, make it so they actually have to worry about you know their Druid picking up the flag as a lot of the time the Druid isn't going to be winning that one versus one versus the Rogue. Yeah, we're going to see what ends up happening with that. And uh, I'm excited to see how these two kind of compositions here play out as well. Uh, I know this Rogue FN, I have had the pleasure of playing against him, and I think he can do a great job locking down some of these teams, uh, some of these uh, players. You can see Catastro now in position, getting ready to pick up the flag. From the roof, he's going to come soaring down, pick up the flag, presumably use a Skull of Impending Doom and a free action potion, and then try to give it over to Musho. And he gets immediately stabbed. Viperstein comes out. He takes a big hit here. Cupid going to see if he can find him with that damage, but he is going to make it over to Musho. Once again, Catastro with the big opener here for his team. Musho now should have no problem just going through the gauntlet of players here, making his way down the ramp, making his way through the Berserker Hut, and FWD Horde has the other flag, and he's actually already basically in the base here, so if they can collapse, if the Nogan Poker Dodgers collapse onto Mushu, this could be big, and they catch him, Sartex Ooh. with a beautiful Rocket Helmet, FN is in position to dispel him, he's going to have no buffs whatsoever, Catastro is on 1 HP, and I think you should just ambush Catastro in that situation, but no, he's going to go for Mushu here, big damage coming out, Death Call comes out, and there's Whoa. a big chain lightning, gets capped, that's got to be a cap right off the get-go here, FWD Horde making his way there into the is. base, and there it is, Noggin Fogger Dodgers not playing around here, nicely done there by Sartex with that Rocket Helmet, catching him out, beautiful as well, yeah, Cupid is there, making sure he's putting pressure on that mage, FN on that Rogue as well, like I kind of mentioned before this happened, beautiful lockdown, and they're going to take the first lead. 
That was just really nice to see. I mean, that was one of the biggest elemental shaman one shots that we have seen so far today. Nog and Fogger Dodgers <laughs> kind of showing anti gnome. This is why you pick up an elemental shaman uh, for your roster is that burst damage is absolutely insane when going after a, a, a flight carrier, especially with Mortal Strike. If you're Arms Warrior as well as your elemental shaman can coordinate an attack with a big Mortal Strike, a big elemental mastery, chain lightning earth shock, that's when you can see the flight carriers go down really, really quick. Nog and Fogger Dodgers, they're able to completely capitalize on that situation and get the quick cap. You can see TGL right now in the base on the mage looking to get the, the, the flag out of the base if he can and reconvene with Mushu. But unfortunately, Mushu not too close Ooh. just yet. And TGL is going to have to move. Cupid's going to be chasing him down. But in the midfield, TGL might be able to make the hero play. Gets the improved counterspell, Frost Nova, Grenade. And it looks like he will be able to get back to his team and uh, drop off the flag. Oh, ZKI gets uh, blinded, drops the flag. Shayna picks it up, go, goes for a little bait and switch there, going through the tunnel now. Let's see what Shayna can do here. Gets uh, the boots are actually up in the tunnel, luckily for him. He's getting chased by Boxy, who has a free action potion, but he's not going to be able to close out the gap there because of that. And now Shayma realizing there is a plethora of players from the enemy faction here in the middle. He's going to use his rocket boot, uh, he's going to use his skeleton pending dude, he's going to use everything he has. He ice blocks, tries to re pick oh. up. Flag. He gets it. He blinks, but ah, oh, so close there. Almost able to get through that gauntlet of players. Nice try there by Zikiai and Shema, but they are going to be unable to get there. And now let's see what Mushu can do here. If Mushu, I think Mushu is actually going to be able to speed cap here. Zikiai getting caught up in a trap, and Mushu having free pass here through the balcony. He's going to be able to tie them up immediately here. Wow. What an aggressive play there. The speed cap coming out from both sides, and Antinome gonna go ahead and tie us up one one yeah and that i mean that can be one of the risky things if you decide to use you know a mage to pick up the flag and he's not able to really get out of the base uh, you're not able to reconnect with your druid it's just such a squishy target and you can waste a lot of you can end up wasting a lot of time and that's exactly what we saw you know zikia shaman they tried to get the flag out of the base but Shaman was just much too vulnerable ended up going down and there was just not enough time for them to re-get that flag um as opposed to Mushu, who was just, he was so close to already capping, and they're able to tie up the game one to one at this point. And I think we're only like, what, five or six minutes into the match? Eight minutes into the match. This has definitely been a really, really quick one for both these teams. Yeah, both teams going out guns blazing. And you can kind of criticize Nogan Fogger Dodgers for going for a swift cap there instead of kind of trying to maybe have their druid go out and escorting him with multiple members. But uh, they went for an aggressive line of play, it didn't work out. but it could have, and it would have been a quick 2-0 lead. That's how they like to play the game. Then you got to respect it. And let's see here what Mushu can get done. Right now, his deadly duo of Catastro is in no condition to help him, in no shape, really, in the fight. So he's going to have to do with TGL here. And TGL looking to pick up the flag here for his team. Let's see what he can do here. TGL, is he going to go through the tunnel, maybe? Let's see. He's going through. He gets Rocket Helm, FN. Is just there and ready to make sure that TGL doesn't get anywhere. And look at that big aim shot coming through from the Hunter. But beautiful swap there. Musho is there and ready wow. to pick it up. And now he gets blinded. Did he abolish it? No, but the Hunter breaks it. FWD is ready to cap it. If Vix can connect on him, if uh, ZKI sorry, can connect on him, it could be big here. Death call coming out. Musho still looking Fine in this situation, but I thank you here connecting on them with a flash bomb. Ooh. Big damage coming out with the Shaman Chain Lightning and Flash Bomb is lasting for a couple more seconds. If they can drop a single heal, it could be massive. ZK actually dropping the flag. Oh. Musho, what is going on? Where's the flag? He Musho dropped the flag what? for Catastro. Catastro uh. tried to make the hero play once again, but they picked it up and they completely uh, obliterated them. That's so unfortunate. I just saw Catastro charging in from left field, blinked on top. <laughs> And then the flag was just gone. So, I mean, those type of plays work out sometimes, but if your opponents are looking out for it, uh, it can definitely backfire. And now we're in a position where neither one of these teams, or actually it is going to be uh, the Noggin Fogger Dodgers. They do get the second cap, and they're going to be up in this match. Now, as you know, they have to go back to the drawing board. It was super unfortunate what just happened. Um, but uh, they still have plenty of time to bring it back. 
Yeah, I mean, this has been a very explosive game so far. Uh, already 10 minutes have elapsed and we've seen three flags being captured. So both of these teams definitely not afraid to just have somebody other than the Druid pick up the flag and try to go for a, a quick maneuver to kind of escort it halfway through and then pass it over to their Druids. And it's been working out pretty well for them so far. FW Horde now in the tunnel looking to make his way up and potentially pick up another flag here for his team, but he's gonna get feared out. And uh, I thank you here. He's just gonna try to clean out uh, the base here, see what they can do. I'm actually a little bit surprised to see FW Horde not going further up in that tunnel, but maybe he wanted to reposition and go through the ramp. I'm not sure there. Maybe he thought he had the flag. I really don't know uh, what was going on there, but uh, it looks fine still for Noggin Pogger Dodgers. He's gonna go ahead and go through the balcony now and he has plenty of members of his team there waiting in the flag room so they should be able to escort it out in the early stages at least so now we're going to take a look at mushu though Mushu is actually crossing the map he's completely through if the entire team of antinome can collapse here onto fwd horde then it, this is going to be a 2-2 situation here fwd horde getting breaking out of the blind here zki very low on hp but he catches a couple of heals s devil looking to potentially DC FWD Horde Vix now gonna connect here with the charge. Does he have an intimidating shot? Does he have anything to potentially make sure that his team can connect onto this druid? It doesn't look like it, but look at all the members here from Antinome getting baited hard here by the druid. They all thought he was gonna go ramp, but he just went graveyard. Trick Shady chasing him down, but I don't think he's gonna be quick enough unless he has a rocket helm here. Flash bomb coming through, and he get he shifts it actually FWD Horde with the hero play, but he gets caught up in a psychic scream instead and now once again he's going to charge back and he should be able to make it across i gotta say beautiful back and forth kiting so far from this druid but they are slowly catching him catastrophe is there on top of him can he make it he gets feared nice slows here coming out of these mages here on the side of noggin poker dodgers cupid as well doing a great job slowing everybody down dropping the viper stings fwd horde after a lot of sticky situations is going to make it across Yep, and he will be getting to a very defense position. In the meantime, Mushu as well is uh, just sitting in the Horde side base, his team reconvening with him. And we're going to go back to kind of a standard defender uh, as well as attack formation for both of these rosters. Right now, Naga Fogger Dodgers, they are up 2-1. to one. So it is up to Antinome to make sure they are making an offensive play. They are getting that flag capture. But Naga Fogger Dodgers, they are not going to make it easy. Uh, let's see what they are able to get done here. See FTW Horde reconvening with his team. S Devil going to be taken down. The Noggin Fogger Dodgers are just more than willing to play solid defense at this point, clean up the offense of Antinome. And now, once they get fully buffed up, they drink the full. You know, everything kind of resets. That's when they can make the decision to make that offensive play and really put some pressure onto uh, the enemy flag here of Mushu. Yeah, and we're going to see uh, for the first time, actually both flags are kind of you know in a situation where it's going to be on the roof and you have a defense and an offense being set up so this is the first time we, we usually this happens at zero zero but uh with how explosive this game has been so far we are going to see it at two to one and if uh, antinome drops this flag then they're going to outright lose the game but you see a little bit of a skirmish happening here in the middle you see the Noggin Fogger Dodgers trying to clean out their base. And there's only two members here of Antinome in their base. So they can just leave them there and go ahead and push the issue here themselves. FN is already in position on that road, feeding information of how many people are in defense, how many people uh, are positioned and where they're positioned. FN going to sap Vix, but Vix actually rezzed in berserker stance so he's gonna go ahead and berserker rage out of that sap and <laughs> just try to uh, go and cross the map get into offensive position but look at all those noggin fogger dodgers players slowly piling in and you can see again the rogue in that balcony position ready to cut off anybody who jumps down from that roof as we see these teams get ready yep noggin fogger dodgers they are in a better position some of the offensive end the members like tgl they got wiped and now they have to reconvene. So there's a moment here for Noggin Fogger Dodgers where they have a moment to actually make this push. They have a five-man offense right now. FN playing the bottom side of the flag room, ready for Musho to actually jump down. And the rest of his team is getting ready to push up. 
We'll see. Shervzy is going to be looking to slow them down. Throws in a flare. This hunter is going to be looking to you know shut down any kind of rogue play. And I think that's more so than anything the reason why we see these rogues kind of sitting, kind of waiting, because they can't really make a push um, outside of stealth uh, in, in that type of position. But right now, Nogginfog Dodgers, they charge in. I tank you heal. Getting caught into a scatter shot. He's got the free action potion. Just trying to run in. Mushu, what is he going to do? He's positioned very far away at this point. Is he going to jump down? FN is waiting for him. The entire team of Nogginfog Dodgers is moving forward. Mushu, though, looking like he's feeling confident to stay up there as they could potentially wipe them. But if his healers go down, it's going to be really, really scary. Dot, dot, derp. Oh, it ends up falling. And the offense of Nogginfog Dodgers gets cleaned up. Nicely done there by anti -num. Yeah, and that's exactly what you want to do. If you aren't on the defense, instead of jumping down, you want to take the fight. You want to try to crowd control it and kind of play out the big brawl here on the roof. And if the defense is good and they win that, then you kind of uh, just remove that situation where the druid has to jump down. The big problem is when everybody collapses on top of the druid at the same time, then you can't really sit there and play out this, you know, Kind of almost like an arena fight because everyone is collapsing on your druid he's going to take so much damage that he has to jump down and that's when fn is going to get his value so uh, so far the push was not that clean from the noggin fogger dodgers and you're gonna to have to regroup and on the flip side fwd horde has made his way to that rooftop positioning and he is waiting for his team to potentially wipe them he fails to jump Feral charges to TGL, but Madnox is there on the Warlock. Death Call could come out here. FWD Horde is in position to potentially get a, a lot of damage on, done onto him, but barely outranging that spell right there. Look at that one Curse of Agony, what it did to FWD Horde. Basically took 60% of his HP as he ran up that tunnel, but he's going to be in good position now, running back up onto the rooftop, and his team should be there to clean up. Uh, in the tunnel, Zeke I casting and rezzing on the graveyard at the same time right now. And he's going to be able to reconvene with his teammates. And we can see Shema here using his ice block, trying to get together with his team. And honestly, I think Noggin Fogger Dodgers should just go ahead and try to wipe these players from anti -Nog in the tunnel before they can group up. Uh, if they can get one more player maybe to rez, it should be an easy cleanup here. You can see Zeke I and, and the rest of the squad now kind of dogpiling in the flag room. But if they wipe there, it's not going to be great for FWD Horde. So FWD Horde realizing that, they're going to go out, cast some heals, and enter the fight basically as a healer very far back right now. Yep, and FWD Horde completely fine. It's going to be Mushu who is under pressure, still just using this pillar to line of sight the best he can as the team of Noggin Fogger Dodgers once again looking to move forward. But it looks like their offense is going to get cleaned up. And that is one of the problems when you're just basically getting dragged through a gauntlet of players. Actually, they managed to hold on just a little bit. They might be able to bring it back. Catastro might fall. If I tank you heal falls, I think that's going to be it. I don't think there's any way Musha will fall. He's got so much backup right now in this position, and his team will be spawning in the graveyard. And that's the thing. If Musha doesn't jump, then FN is basically just a sitting duck at the bottom side of the map. Does manage to find a sap onto the Juicy Six, so, or Juicy Six is not going to be able to really help out uh, his druid but i don't think he really needs the help at this point in the match and uh fw horde uh, is looking like he could potentially be the one in contention right now as we do see the team of anti-gnome set up an offense but once again it's getting wiped out and both these druids should be completely fine for a reset from the graveyard yeah fw horde no gets caught up in a flash bomb but do they have the damage vix doesn't have a way to make it to his target. He flash bombed him to just survive here, I think. I think Vix is going for a little first aid play here. Trying to stay in, and Mad Nox uh, is just gonna... Okay, so he goes for the death coil. Does he have any heals, though? He is getting a couple of heals. Vix is actually back in the fight here as well. FWD Horde gonna use his Skull of Impending Doom for the movement speed. Jump down to the roof. Ooh, big Shadow Bolt! but it gets resisted, and if it crit instead, he would have just died right there, but instead, FWD Horde is going to take that resist and run with it uh, to the rooftop here, to be specific. No, he's going to go back into the flag room. His team is wiping the offense here of the anti-gnomes, and now they're going to go back into the starting area. Vix, though, charging back onto oh. his target. Vix is doing a lot of work here for his team. He kills one player, but everybody is rezzing here. I don't think Vix can do much about this one. He gets a fear, <laughs> a but... Hero. 
Not going to happen, Vix. Nice try, though. It is a nice try. He liked those plays. He was looking to make a montage with that play, get the triple fear, take down the play care by himself with his rank 14 weapon. But unfortunately, too much backup, too much experience will shut down that warrior. And now it looks like FTW Horde as well, or is FD, uh, FWD Horde uh, as well as Mushu looking completely fine, sitting in their base with their team. Their health is absolutely fine. And we still have Noggin Fogger Dodgers. They are up two to one in the match. So for Antinome, they really, at some point in the game, I mean, we're at 20 minutes, so there's still 15 minutes left. But at some point in the game, Antinome uh, might have to actually make, you know, a little bit of a risk with their offense. You know, at what point of the game do we really think they're going to do that? I mean, so far it seems like they can continue to make the plays they're making, and if it just goes a little bit more in their favor, maybe they actually can get that second cap. But, you know, with five minutes left of the match, they might need to consider making even more of an offensive push. Yeah, well, I think right now you just keep committing to, you know, a five or a six man offense, keep doing what you're doing. And if you can uh, secure a flag cap, then you're going to tie it up and you're going to be in a prime position because you got the last cap and you're going to be able to win that way. Uh, but as time goes on, I think you're going to get more and more desperate on the side of Antinome if you cannot get that 2 2. And then you're going to have to kind of invest more people in your offense. So. To answer your question, I think right now you can afford to do a couple of more pushes like this. And if it doesn't work out by maybe the 29 or 30 minute mark, then maybe you stand out seven people or even eight people in that offense. Uh, and if you do it at a time where you just wipe them uh, in the enemy team's offense, in the side of Noggin Fogger Dodgers, then all of a sudden you're going to be in a prime position to uh, maybe take a, 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 a an uneven fight. But at least your flag carrier won't be pressured in that situation. And I think there's a very big uh, chance that you can secure a kill that way. Yep. Mushu is actually playing the graveyard uh, side of things, looking to reconvene with his team, and he does get the backup that he needs. Looking like he will be fine for FW Horde. Here's an offensive push here by Antinome as they're looking to position and actually run up the ramp and try to get on target. FW Horde is going to be jumping down, looking like he wants to go for a capture, but there's no pressure on Mushu. So, uh, unfortunately, not going to be able to find it. And I think Noggin Fogger Dodgers, it's quite clear at this point, they're willing to play a little bit more defense if they need to. They have the lead. They really don't want Anti Gnome to tie it up because if they do tie it up, then Noggin Fogger, Noggin Fogger Dodgers are actually in a spot where uh, they're going to be losing the game because it is going to be last cap that wins. So, you know, playing it defensively, making sure you don't get capped on, something like that can backfire, but you also really can't blame them at this spot for just really wiping up that offense anytime anti Gnome comes in, and then they can regroup and try to make a play. Oh, but look at FN, a sneaky, sneaky rogue. He is just in the base right now, getting ready to set up a perfect situation. And the best thing about having a rogue that has, you know, snuck in like this, it's going to be that, you know, the false sense of security. When you look at Sherpsy there on the Hunter, he's going to think that, oh, I'm flaring the entrance. Oh, I got a trap down. No, oh, this rogue is not here. You know, he's going to be jumping down. But all of a sudden, FN can actually buy his team enough time to connect onto the flag carrier right away. This next push from the Noggin Fogger Dodgers is going to be massive because FN can go sap the priest blind druid and then all of a sudden free action potion rocket boots couple of warriors couple of mages all of a sudden you're gonna have a whole team collapsing on a flag carrier you got flash bombs you got stuns you got everything you need to take him down so the fact that fn has snuck in like this is super good for the dodgers yeah fn in a really 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 good position uh if he can actually set it up for his team we'll have to see if he is able to do so, you know, keeping tabs on the rogue is just so important. Like you said, just Ooh. because the rogue can potentially set up so much, it does look like uh, FDW Horde going to be completely fine, and maybe even the offense here from Anti Gnome getting get taken down. Nicely done there by Shema, Cupid, uh, ZQI, and it looks like that's going to be you know a complete wipe oh. there. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Musha sure. could be in a little bit of trouble. Here they go, the offensive push coming in. It does look like it. FN's going to be charging in. He's looking to take down Mushu. Can he connect? That really is the question. Full blind uh, onto Castro. Mushu may be getting caught into a stun, but he's getting snared. Really good backup here by this mage, Catastro. Looks like Mushu will be able to escape. That was a great offensive play there by the team of Noggin Fogger Dodgers. But 
looks like Musho, with the positioning, with the help of his team, is able to escape. But we'll see how long he can actually get away here, Zico. Uh, I, that's, I'm sorry, I fan, but that was really, really underwhelming what you did there. He, he mind controlled an undead. He sapped the priest, which was good, but he blinded uh, two mages, and the druid could just dispel it. The mage can just block it. So I would have loved to see the blind happen on the druid, the guy who can dispel it. And then after that, your team has enough time to collapse onto him. He also missed his flash bomb. So FN definitely uh, feeding a little bit in that situation. Trying to make some plays. <laughs> trying to make the wrong kind of plays. Just CC the Druid so your team can connect onto him. And then you're going to have overwhelming damage and be able to kill him. Unfortunately for him, wasn't able to do it. Uh, regardless, it was a nice try. He did sneak in into a really good spot. So... Uh, you know, he did put himself in a position to make big plays, but fortunately wasn't able to capitalize on that position quite enough. And I think that was a really big push here for Nogginfoga Dodgers, because now on the flip side, you can see everyone grouping up here on the side of Antinome in the tunnel. But I got to say, Cupid is doing a great job right now, firing away with those Viper Stings, really really slowing down some of these players on the side of Antinome. I mean, Van, you know firsthand as a mage. Is there an, a more annoying spell in this game than Viper Sting? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe, you know, Spell Lock, maybe Soul Link, yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I th I would say in Classic WoW, Viper Sting is definitely up there as one of the most annoying spells. And I mean, if you see a player like Cupid, just throw out Vipers on the entire enemy team. That just really slows their offense, right? All of a sudden, they have to wait and drink. If they don't have full mana, they're not going to be feeling nearly as confident to make those plays. So uh, it's looking good so far. You can see Castro um, trying to move forward and actually try to set up and actually peel for his team. He gets silenced and potentially taken down using the ice block to avoid just a little bit of damage as Mushu is on the run. He's got the free action potion, but... Once again, the defense of Antinome, all those snares, all those roots from the you know the three mages that they have in the match allows Mushu more than enough time to kite around on that druid using the various jumps as well as the free action potion uh, to escape. Yeah, and the, the team of Antinome right now, they're like, wait, where's the FC right now? Uh, they ran up all the way up and they're looking for him, but they can't find him. And Voxy didn't see him because FWD Horde did such an early jump that he kind of just took them by surprise. He's got back up by his mage, but he could get clotheslined in the tunnel. There is a TGL waiting for him alongside with a priest. So Boxy as well could be making his way there. Pretty scary situation, but I think FWD Horde is going to make it. Oh yeah, with that speed boost, he should be able to make it all the way to the tunnel. Nice flare there from Cupid as well. I got to say Cupid, he's been doing a great job, honestly. Uh, it's just living up to his name, man. I wish I wish he fires one of his arrows on me at some point, but right now he's <laughs> doing a great job just firing away here on the side of Antinome. TGL is going to take another big angel to the face and get sent to the graveyard, but now big push here onto Mushu, caught up in a flash bomb into the blind here. They have him kind of uh, isolated in the tunnel. FN going on a one-man mission, gets caught up in the freezing trap into a shatter effect, vanishes actually if he can catch Mushu here he could potentially solo him Mushu needs to be careful he needs to sit in bear form he gets splash bomb Sartex is there to potentially back him up here's the Ali Shaman Jinzi Bzzz. going for a big chain lightning earth shock Mushu coming out of the flash bomb Ninja Swiftly comes out the silence is a little bit too late right there but they could still have enough nah, damage doesn't Sartex matter. with that damage no they pick it up look at oh! <laughs> catastrophe yes. once again can he escape? Catastro, he's running with the skull of impending doom, but his man is burnt down, his health is burnt down, and there's no way he is getting out of that one. And the FWD Horde can get on top, which he is. That is going to be a 3-1 to one game, 29 minutes in. Extremely well done by both these teams, but you can tell Nog and Fogger Dodgers looking really, really great in that one.